At the start of our segment in the introduction, we talked about the importance of the four C's. And we said, when you trace the roots of athletic greatness, regardless if it's a great individual performance or a phenomenal team performance, you will always find excellence in the same four areas every single time. And we call those four areas the four C's of peak performance. They stand for composure, concentration, confidence, commitment. Every one of the segments that we're going to be taking you through is going to be touching on one or more of those four areas. Segment two is concentration, sometimes called focus. And the interesting thing about focus is you hear, you hear some coaches talk about focus and instruct focus along these lines. James, focus. Sam, focus. And this encouragement or this admonishment comes right in the middle of the game or perhaps in the middle of practice. And there isn't always an actual transference of skills to help James or Samantha to actually focus. Focus how? And focus on exactly what? When it comes to great concentration and focus, we're going to really hone in with laser-like focus on a couple, three areas. The first area is going to be how we stay in the present, particularly under pressure. We hear that a lot. Focus in the present, focus in the now, focus on one play at a time. That's critical advice for a player who wants to perform very, very well under pressure. But we want to talk specifically about exactly how you do that. The second area, how we should focus on a great clutch attitude. There is an incorrect definition of choking and a correct definition of choking. And many athletes carry that incorrect definition of choking like a 500 pound millstone around their neck, particularly under pressure. And third, we want to talk about how we can manipulate pressure in our mind, how we can better understand pressure. That pressure really isn't something which just uh, floats around in the air and is kind of hard to define and lands on one athlete um, and doesn't land on another athlete or lands on one team and doesn't hit another team. Pressure really is fairly easy to define. And there are some actual variables involved in pressure that if we were to work on them, we can help to manipulate and reduce pressure in the mind of an athlete. Obviously a very, very important skill set to have. So let's first talk about what we're actually doing to stay in the present. That's a concept in basketball that I learned from, from Mike Krzyzewski. I played for Coach K in college and I worked under him as an assistant and he always had a saying called next play. That basketball is too fast paced of a game for you to dwell upon uh, the last action, whether it was positive or negative. You, know, you can't lament a mistake made because you might uh, take away an opportunity to make a steal or get a deflection or do something positive uh, on the next play. You right. can't do anything, or, or it, it, by the same token, you make a great play that may give you a great, con you can't afford to celebrate and take a mental holiday while you're, that play's over. You have to move on to the next play and do so immediately. Can you think of a couple of examples where staying in that present, staying in the moment was of particular importance? Well, I think there's a few. Uh, you know, in our sport, um, we have you know, the, like I was talking about, the intensity of, of the actual play. But we also have one position that sticks out that's totally different, and that's the goaltender. And those moments always seem to come and go with the, with the goaltender. You know, his ability to respond uh, to a goal against, uh, his ability to respond to giving up or to making a bad play that leads to a goal against. Um, I've had situations like that. I mean, I can think back... Uh, to our, our national championship uh, in 1994, we had a goaltender, Blaine Locker, who eventually went on to play for the Boston Bruins. But I remember him um, having a situation where he knew a puck went in the net. And back then, we didn't have instant replay. And I remember the post-game comment was that everything passed the goal line except for made in Czechoslovakia, which is on the side of the puck. So, um, but the thing is, is that knowing that that puck went over the goal line, in his mind, he had the ability to, to, to almost use that as ammunition to come back and be that much better. Because, I mean, it was, it was a mistake by him because the puck just kind of slid through him and across the goal line, and the only person that could see it was him laying on the ice with his head inside the net looking at the puck slide over. And, and I think that um, from that moment, I mean, he, he was stellar. I mean, he had had a great run up to that point because he had like eight straight shutouts, which was a record. Um, and then after that, uh, you know, he was phenomenal um, in, the, in the next game, uh, the next night against the University of Michigan, and then, and then moving on to the Frozen Four, which, you know, we had a, an overtime game against Harvard, which was a 2-1 game, and then 
going on to beat Boston University 7-1 to in the final. And a lot of it had to do with Blaine and his ability to respond to maybe something like having a little secret that, uh, that he knew and his ability to use that as motivation to, to, to even elevate his performance further, um, I thought had a, a real impact. I'm, I used the UCLA example in the 04 championship and that game had, that would be a fantastic exercise in mental preparation. That game had so many uh, ups and downs and so many different uh, periods during the game where one team was on top of the other and situations happened in that game. And one that really comes to mind when you were asking the question was um, after we had scored the own goal that I talked about earlier, um, we came back late in the game and scored a goal to tie it. So we're now within about five minutes of the game ending and we end up committing a foul in our penalty area. Uh, Melissa Tancredi, one of the Canadian players that we had that actually plays for the Women's World Cup team, uh, currently, she fouled one of the UCLA players in the penalty box. So now there's less than five minutes left, and they have a penalty kick, which probably is going to win the game for UCLA. There's not much time to get it back if we lose. And we had a goalkeeper, Erica Bond, that quite honestly had an up-and-down season for us through the year. Um, she was a starter early, uh, lost her job in the middle of the season to our backup, kind of regained it late in the year. And in this game, she had just – 10 minutes earlier had been scored on because of this miscommunication with our center back and had this own goal scored on her. And I think it's a perfect example of staying in the moment because now there's a penalty kick. And if she's thinking about, well, I have to make this save or we're going to lose the game, or if there's only four minutes left in the game and if I don't make it, we're going. Instead of thinking there, she was absolutely in the moment. Now, I have to preface that story by telling you that on the sidelines as a coaching staff, our preparation and building up to it was our backup keeper was a little bit better in defending penalty kicks than Erica was. So before the penalty kick happened, we were already discussing this goes into overtime. If we have to make a change, do we change if it gets down to penalty kicks? So we're having this as a staff conversation. And the young lady from uh, UCLA steps up with four minutes left, and Erica makes this flying, diving save and literally pulls it out of the upper 90. And uh, mm. an unbelievable world-class save. Saves the penalty kick, so we still have life, you know, and we go on into the game and go into overtime and go into penalty kicks. Now, naturally, as soon as she makes that save, we're looking at each other's staff goes, she's staying in, you know, at this point. But she was... She was a, that's a perfect example of being in that moment because it had been real easy to have still been uh, out of the game because of the own goal that had just happened uh, 10 minutes earlier. And it would have been real easy for her at that moment to be looking ahead and thinking, what if, you know, looking at the outcome of the penalty instead of being in the moment to have to make that save in front of 8,000 people uh, to keep us in it for a national championship.